Hello, welcome to BMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover the website Pet Food Advisor as it's linked to the now popular person Michael Segman. So join me, you'll learn something. Michael Seigman went to high school at Newport News and after that went and did an undergraduate degree in chemistry at Roanoke College. Then they went on to graduate as a doctor of dental surgery in 1973. Immediately after graduating as a DDS, Michael Seigman went into the US Army in the Dental Corps from 1973 to 1975. After leaving the Army, Michael E. Seigman started up a dental office and was practicing as a dentist until 2014. In 2008, Mike became the president and CEO of a company called Clicks and Traffic LLC. Clicks and Traffic is the parent company for the website Dog Food Advisor. Michael advertises themselves as the creator and managing editor for dogfoodadvisor.com to try to convince you that DFA is the best website out there. They brag about how they are ranked number one by alexa.com which is an Amazon website. So when you look at their website it's quite nifty and it is pretty easy to navigate around. They do offer to give you warnings for recalls which could potentially be helpful if those recalls are relayed to you in a timely manner and if they're relayed to you accurately. So if you go to an individual food listing it starts by having a five-star rating system and underneath that they will list the AFCO nutrient profile if there is one because shockingly not all pet foods even stumble over that very low bar. Underneath that they then calculate via dry matter the protein, fat, and carb percentage for each pet food. Underneath those calculations will be a list of the pet food ingredients. However, they take it upon themselves to list in red font the controversial items. This is an issue because some of the things that they list as controversial actually aren't. Sometimes they are correct, like garlic could be a controversial item as in a high enough amount it can cause an anemia in our dogs so that would be a good item to bring attention to however they also will put in red font other items that they term as fillers and there is no legal definition for what the word filler means when related to pet food. It's simply used when trying to fear monger and make ingredients seem bad when in reality they aren't. Underneath the list of ingredients they will in a little bit of detail cover the first number of ingredients that have been listed and give a little bit of background information about those ingredients. Sometimes their explanations are actually correct, like they will differentiate between a meat and talk about how that will have a lot of water content in it, which means that once the water has been removed during processing, you are going to be left with less nutrition for the pet when compared to something like a meal, which is a meat concentrate where the water weight has already been removed from that ingredient. And then they just get other things incredibly wrong. For example, they seem to have a very negative association with the ingredient corn. Now it is fair to say that if you are feeding a whole piece of corn that will not be well digested by the dog or cat GI tract. However, if corn is ground up, we have a significant amount of research indicating that it can be very well used by our pets and that the micronutrient profile of ground corn can very nicely complement the micronutrients that are missing in other common ingredients like chicken meal or other meat meals. So corn can actually be a very beneficial and nutritious ingredient to have in pet food. The best summary that I could tell from this website is that they seem to be under the misconception that the more protein, the better. They also seem to put more value 
on amino acids that would be derived from a meat ingredient. To summarize the major problems here, there's two. One, it is incredibly obvious that Mike Segman has exactly zero animal nutrition training or expertise. I have covered in a previous video who pet nutrition experts are. However, Michael Segman is neither of those things. The biggest way that this lack of expertise shows is that this entire website is based on ranking pet foods by their ingredient list. This is a major shortcoming because we know that animals do not need ingredients. What they need are nutrients. So what really matters is how bioavailable are the micronutrients that the ingredients are made up of. What that means is how much of the ingredients can the animal use. If you have an ingredient in a pet food, and it has the micronutrients that we know our animals need, but the animal can't absorb it properly, then it's useless and you're just paying for very expensive poop. So what's most important is that there are some pet food companies who are rigorously testing for ingredient bioavailability. There are a few things that can also make a huge difference in ingredients that is not going to be represented in a list of those ingredients. There can be a big difference in ingredients quality. You can think in the human world about, say, different types of oils. They can both be called, say, an olive oil, but there can be a huge difference in the quality of that olive oil. The same goes for the ingredients in pet food. And second, another thing we need to consider is how those ingredients are prepared before they go into the pet food. Again, if we think back to that example of corn, a whole corn kernel not going to be very helpful. If you grind it, the bioavailability of that ingredient skyrockets and all of a sudden you have a very useful ingredient. It may not look as good <laughs> to people at a glance and pet food companies are aware of this and they will market and tell people inaccurate things about ingredients. Unfortunately, they also make dangerous recommendations about raw foods. I've covered this topic in depth in a previous video. I'll link it in the doobly-doo for you if you're looking for more information. Something else that I noticed that was interesting to me is that Pet Food Advisor doesn't seem to have any information about the concern of how some pet foods are linked to nutritionally caused dilated cardiomyopathy. I've covered that subject in a previous video as well. Pet Food Advisor seems to simply be ignoring this and they continue to highly recommend a number of the brands that are most linked with causing this heart problem. So you say, okay, Dr. M, if this is not a good way to be evaluating pet food, how do I know what's best to feed? Veterinary nutritionists tell us that currently the best way we have to evaluate pet foods is to use the WSAVA guidelines. In the video I did previously discussing who pet nutrition experts are, I also covered what those guidelines are, so you really should watch that video. I'll link it below. If you prefer to read, I will also link the WSAVA guidelines in a written form below. Those guidelines are currently the best way we have to evaluate the quality of a pet food, not a list of ingredients that do not give us near enough information about a pet food quality. Essentially, this dentist is just another example of how a non-expert is sharing a lot of incorrect and sometimes dangerous information. The articles do not link to any peer-reviewed research. They do not interview any experts in pet nutrition. If you are looking for information on pet food, you should be reading from pet nutrition experts. I'll link a few resources for you down below. You should also be talking to your veterinarian or consulting a veterinary nutritionist as there can be specific medical situations that require very individualized nutrition. The big thing here and what it always comes back to is that it is absolutely crucial that you follow research-based experts when you are looking to get information about a subject. If you find someone who's putting out information but they don't have any expertise, you should be ignoring them 
and moving on until you find an actual expert who is able to cite their sources and who is producing accurate research-based information for you. If you have another popular person that you would like me to cover in the future, please comment it down below. I'd love to hear from you. I've been working especially on increasing audio quality recently, so hopefully today's video is better again. Um, and if you have any tips or tricks for me regarding audio, please let me know. Really, the big takeaway point is to always remember to find experts in a particular field to get information from them as those are going to be the most accurate and best pieces of information for you to follow. Pet Food Advisor doesn't do any of the above and it is not worth using in any way. I do put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you next week. All right, bye!